يحسن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا مولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا مولانا محمد صلاه دائمه مقبوله تعد بها انك العظيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين صدق الله على النظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الامين المكين الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين اوت اعظم بمن بيسر سما مدد قبلائے دی مدد کعبائے ہی ماں مدد قادریم نارائے عورت آدم بی ظلم دمز شیخ احمد رضا خان قدب عالم بی ظلم سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خان زندہ باد مسلک سرکار عالی عالی حضرت زندہ باد یا الہی مسلک احمد رضا خان زندہ باد حفظ ناموں سے رسالت کا جو ذمہ دار ہے سیدی یا مرشدی شاہ مصطفیٰ خواہ زندہ باد حامل فیض رضا مصطفیٰ امداد کن صلی اللہ علیہ نبی رومی و علیہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلاة و سلام علیکہ یا سیدی یا سندی یا حبیبی یا طبیبی یا رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و علیہ وسلم و صحابکہ یا رحمت العالمین اور پیز دیوٹو المائچی اللہ the root and salam is upon the most perfect, the exalted and glorified of Allah's creation. Sayyiduna wa Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These blessings and salutations upon the Anbiya Ikram, Ahlabayda Yathar, Sahaba Ikram, Khulifa Rashidin, Tabayin, Tabay Tabayin, Aimma Imushtahideen, Awliya Ikamilin and all those who will follow the path until the last day. We thank Almighty Allah through His infinite mercy, and through the wasil of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for blessing us with the opportunity to congregate for Salat al-Jum'ah and to prostrate in his most exalted court. Before continuing, let us all direct our hearts and our thoughts and our minds towards the holy and the sanctified court of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in doing so, let us collectively recite the Rushalim upon the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina awlana muhammadin wa ala ala sayyidina wa ala muhammadin salatan daimatan madbulatan ta'addi biha anna haqqahu al-alim Almighty Allah by His divine grace and by His mercy has placed man on the earth And the first of men is our father, Hadrat Adam ala Nabina, alayhi salatu wa salam. And ever since then, this earth has been populated by mankind. And amongst men, amongst the humans, Allah Almighty granted the greatest and the most exalted status to those who obeyed the command which Allah sent through his Nabis. This has been in every era, in every zaman. And then came the Khairul Qurun, the greatest of all times. The most exalted zamana and the most exalted era of every era. And that being the era and the zamana of the beloved Rasul. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And in every era, especially from the era of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Almighty Allah granted a special excellence to those amongst the believers who strive to acquire the knowledge of the deen of Allah. Those who strive to acquire the knowledge of Allah's deen have been given a special excellence in the Ummah of the Beloved Rasul Sallallahu Ta'ala Alayhi Wasallam This ilm 
this knowledge of deen is so precious and so valuable that when a sincere seeker walks the path of knowledge then the angels the malaika lay down their wings for him to walk on Allah, malaika lay down their wings for him to walk on when he strives and makes an intention to attain ilm al-deen this is a great honor this is a great honor which Allah has given and amongst the people of knowledge Allah has given a special excellence to those who reached heights in knowledge by the divine grace of Almighty Allah you look at the companions of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you will find that their knowledge their ilm their taqwa was second to none yes, after the anbiya ikram alayhi salatu was salam you could see this glow by the manifestation of the knowledge of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam flowing in the companions of the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we know that the anbiya ikram alayhi salatu was salam do not leave any inheritance they do not leave behind any worldly inheritance but they leave behind one thing and that is the knowledge and the inheritors to that knowledge are the ulama ideen the ulama haq we are not talking about those who claim to have knowledge and claim to have got but yet they act contrary to that for the sake of the dunya or those who are bad mazhabs etc now the reason that i am discussing this very briefly today is that today i want to pay tribute to a very great personality a personality who was with us a few weeks back huzur sayyid muhaddis kabir hazrat allama mufti ashah zia mustafa qadri amjadi madzil lahu nurani who turns 93 years old today subhanallah on the second of shawwal and i thought it is only befitting that we dedicate the jumah today to him and to his service a personality who has been teaching the bukhari sharif for more than half a century Muhammad has been teaching Muhammad. one is reading and one is teaching the bukhari of the bilab rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam's ahadith he has been teaching it for more than half a century actually more than 70 years have been gone him teaching the bukhari sharif and i was looking at a hadith of the bilab rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is in bahiyati There is a hadith that is reported in Bayhaqi that Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and before I say this remember that the grandest status amongst the people of knowledge is given to a faqih a faqih Allah says it is in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when Allah wills to send his special mercy and blessing upon somebody he makes him a faqih I mean brief he makes him a jurist a doctor of islamic law in the real sense not just by degree in the real sense and huzur e muhaddis e kabir has been regarded as the faqih e azam of this time one of the greatest faqihs of this time but when i read this hadith when i read this hadith that is in bayhaqi it made me think how fortunate we are that even in this time allah has given us the opportunity to see a personality to sit with a personality to take knowledge from a personality like huzur sayyid muhaddis al-kabir the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said allah will raise that person as a faqih this man is already a faqih but allah will raise that person as a faqih who learns or memorizes 40 hadith pertaining to the deen of my ummah that person who memorizes or learns how many hadith memorizes 40 hadith Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم said that person who memorizes 40 hadith of my deen Allah will raise him on the day of qiyamah amongst the fuqaha as a faqih and Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم said that I shall be his intercessor and I will be a witness over him the person who learned 40 hadith it made me think that we talking about a man who learned 40 hadith in the hadith Rasul Pak صلى الله عليه وسلم a man who learns صلى الله عليه وسلم says 40 hadith this is his maqam that he will be risen amongst the faqih amongst the fuqaha and i will intercede for him 
and I would be his witness on that day. And I thought, this muhaddis, 40 hadith he learns, he will get this maqam. And the great muhaddis, Huzur muhaddis Kabir, has been blessed with knowledge of more than 60,000 hadith. More than 60,000 hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he's already the greatest faqih of this time. How will he be risen in the court of Almighty Allah? It makes you think. It makes you value and appreciate those who have this kind of knowledge. You know, knowledge is not something that you attain and keep to yourself. One of the greatest misers is a man who has knowledge and does not impart that knowledge. But at the same time, great value is given to those who teach that knowledge. That is why we have been taught, and it is in many narrations, that do not teach those who are unworthy. Do not teach those who are unworthy because they will use that knowledge to fight against the men of knowledge. We have been taught this. Teach only those who are worthy and we see it today. Okay? It has been mentioned in the Hadith Sharif and while talking about the maqam and the excellence of the personality who we are paying tribute to who say the Muhammad is Khalil. I saw this beautiful narration again. Because this personality is imparting knowledge for more than 70, 80 years. From a very young age, from the age of 14, 15, imparting knowledge. And before that even. And then you get those and they strive for knowledge. Today, even us, we find it difficult to encourage our children to gain any medin. Whether it is to make your child a hafiz or an alim or give him the basic knowledge. How much of time do we spend and how much of money do we spend teaching our children everything else in the world? How much of time in 24 hours do we spend trying to encourage our children to become this, this, this and this? And how many times do we try to tell our child the importance of becoming a hafiz of Quran? The importance of becoming an alim? The importance of learning how to read one dua at least? Sometimes we don't even teach our children to read a basic dua. When you die and go from the world, how will they pray for you? How will they raise their hands and make dua for you? It has been mentioned in the hadith of the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the most disappointed person, the most regretful person on the day of Qayyamah will be the one who had the opportunity in this dunya to acquire the knowledge of deen, but he did not acquire it. That person who had the chance to learn ilm deen and he didn't learn it, he will be the one amongst the most disappointed people on the day of Qayyamah. And it has been mentioned that the other person who will be in the same disappointed state will be that person who acquired knowledge. Another person who will be regretful on the day of Qayyamah and in a disappointed state will be that person who acquired knowledge. But neither did others, others hear it from him, nor did they benefit from him, nor did he manage to attain any benefit from his own knowledge. In other words, neither did he teach it to anybody. Nor did anybody come to learn it from him, nor did he manage to benefit from his own knowledge. What it means, he didn't practice upon the knowledge that he had. He just learnt it for the sake of learning. Hadrat Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an once asked Hadrat Ka'b Ahbar radiallahu an. Hadrat Umar radiallahu an asked Hadrat Ka'b Ahbar radiallahu ta'ala an. He said, Tell me about the people of knowledge. Tell me about the real people of knowledge. Asal al. Tell me about the true people of knowledge. He said, they are those who have knowledge and practice in accordance with their knowledge. They are those who have knowledge and their amal, their actions are in accordance with their knowledge. And then, Hazrat Umar asked, what has caused knowledge to to be taken away from the hearts of the ulama? What has caused knowledge to be taken away from the hearts of the ulama? Kaab Ahbar said, greed. Allah, Allah. Greed Allah. took the knowledge away from the hearts, it takes it away. When you look at personalities like Huzur al Sharia and Huzur Muhammad Zakabir, and you look at the Akabirin before that, they never ran behind the dunya. They were firm in their deen, and the dunya ran behind them. That was the difference. Sarkar Hosi Azam didn't run behind the wealth of the dunya. The wealth of the dunya was kissing his feet. Sarkar Khaja Gharibu Nawaz didn't run behind anything in the dunya. The dunya ran behind him. He commanded his disciples. 
put my foot in the, in, the, in, the, in the entire lake and the Anasagar was inside it. The dunya were slaves of them because they were not slaves of the dunya. They didn't have this knowledge and this ilm because of the dunya. This is something very important to understand. It is in the Hadith of Mubarakah. And this Hadith is in Ibn Majah. That indeed there shall be those in my Ummah who will learn the Quran and they will say, they will say, we will go to the wealthy leaders and acquire the worldly possessions from them. And we will safeguard our deen from them. But it comes in the Hadith, they will not be able to. They will not be able to because they went to those wealthy leaders for the sake of dunya. And they used their deen as a bargaining chip. It is said that they will not be able to safeguard the Iman. Even though they say we will be able to safeguard our deen, they will not be able to safeguard it. And then it came in the Hadith Sharif. Just like one cannot acquire anything from a thorny tree, except its thorns. Similarly, one cannot acquire anything from wealthy leaders except for error. Allah. This has a message Allah. for the ulama deen that was given. And if you look at this in Huzur Sayyidi Muhammad Sayyid Kabir, the personality that we are paying tribute to, that personality concerning whom Huzur Hujjatul Islam, the elder son of Imam Ahlul Sunnah radiallahu anhu said to him as a child, he saw with his eyes Huzur Hujjatul Islam. He was blessed with being touched by Huzur Hujjatul Islam on his Sar Mubarak when he was a child. When Huzur Hujjatul Islam saw Huzur Muhammad Sayyid Kabir, he said, you should study Il Medin when he was a little boy. You should study Il Medin. And I made dua for you that when you study, you will be very successful. Why are you saying this at 93 years that he has such a memory that he quotes hadith upon hadith? He's able to give the laws of fiqh at this age without any difficulty. It is the dua of the awliya like Hudure, Hujjatul Islam radiallahu When he was born, his father, Huzur Sadr Sharia, Muhaddis Kabir's father, Huzur Sadr Sharia, is the biggest Khalifa of Allah. He is amongst the Ajilla Khalifa of Allah Hadrat radiallahu the author of Bahari Sharia, the wrote Bahari Sharia in 17 volumes. That Hudur Sadr Sharia, when the son of his was born, he said, Inshallah, this son of mine will be a very great alim in the future. Today we are seeing it. Hudur Mufti Azam Hind radiallahu an, his murshid, and the second son of Allah Hadrat, Adi Murbarkat radiallahu under whom Hudur Sayyidi Muhaddis Kabir learned and studied and tried practice in the art of writing fatawa. He said that amongst the sons of Sadr Sharia, most I like Ziaul Mustafa. Most. Huzur Muhaddisi Azam Pakistan. Allama Sardar Ahmad Rahmatullah Ta'ala Lay. He said when he was still young, he said that this respected Ziaul Mustafa Sahib is an intelligent personality. Huzur Haf is a millat. He's Ustad. Muhaddisi Kabir is Ustad. What did he say? What did the Ustad say about the student? He said the amount of pleasure that I get from teaching. The special sciences of knowledge to Ziyal Mustafa, I would not get in teaching 100 students. I would not get in teaching 100 students. And Huzur e Mujahid e Millat, Huzur e Mujahid e Millat radiallahu an, one of the greatest Imams of his zamana, he says, whatever Khilafat, etc., Huzur e Sadr Sharia bestowed upon me, I am handing over all of this to his son Ziyal Mustafa. Eh? This is the Makkah and the Fazilat. And Huzur Sayyidi Tabi Sharia, Rahmar e Tariqat, used to always say that Allama Ziya Mustafa Sahib in this time is not one man himself. He's the commander in chief of Maslaki Allah Hadrat. He is the personality who is steadfast on the Maslaki of Allah Hadrat and who will always remain steadfast on Maslaki Allah This is the word of Huzur Tabi Sharia. And he said, Muhaddis e Kabir is not a single person, but it is the name of an entire assembly. It is name of an entire movement at nine at ninety-three years old today. Huzur e Muhaddis e Kabir is traveling the length and the breadth of the dunya to spread what is haq, to say what is haq. People at his age today are bed on their bed. They are not able to walk many people, even less than his age. Even at our age, we're suffering with this illness and that illness and this problem and that problem. But this is the Ruhani Taqat. This is spiritual strength and the dua of the pious. Always remember. Always remember, and I end with this. When it comes to knowledge and when it comes to knowledge of deen, keep in mind that somebody can cook the best meal. Let's say Eid was, Eid was now, yesterday. They cooked the best biryani in the house without comparison. And they put it in the most beautiful tray. 
and it was presented you to you on the most beautiful eating mat with all lovely things set around it and you were given the most beautiful plate to put it in and it was cooked by somebody the most beloved to you and you put it in your plate and you took the first bite and you said what has gone wrong here? the plate is looking very nice the tray is smart looking at the presentation of the food was five star but there's no salt but there's no salt in the food how will you get the taste will you enjoy that food you will not enjoy it likewise without comparison having knowledge is one thing but not having the connection to the pious servants of Allah and not humbling yourself in front of the pious servants of Allah and not taking their for use and barakat is like food without salt that knowledge will be there there will be no taste in it there will be no pleasure in it if you want true knowledge attain it from the feet of the pious don't take knowledge from those who are useless when it comes to piety those who compromise Allah's deen and the example of that is huzur e muhaddis e kabir who always took knowledge from the feet of the pious servants of Almighty Allah that is why you see the barakat of that knowledge continuing today Allah keep us with this jazba of attaining knowledge of deen may we continue learning where we never think that we have enough like in the dunya we think when you have money you when I have a hundred thousand you think I got, okay I got enough no you won't I want more when you have five hundred thousand you still think I don't have enough when you have a million you still think you don't have enough when you have ten million you still think you don't have enough that is why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said nothing will fill the stomach of Bani Adam except the sand of his grave nothing will fill it but knowledge you learn one thing and you think I got enough no don't do that continue striving but take it from those who have pure knowledge those who have attained knowledge from the feet of the pious that knowledge will be beneficial to you learn from personalities like Huzur Sayyidi Muhammad Sayyidi Kabir whenever they come Hadrat has come a few weeks ago he has left we don't know if we'll get this opportunity again he's 93 years old and that's why we all tell people keep your heart attached to the pious keep your heart attached to the pious Allah says in the Quran Ya yuwal ladhina amun taqullaha wa kunum as sadiqeen I read this ayat almost every Jummah some days I don't and the reason I do that is because Huzur al-Muhaddis al-Kameer Huzur al-Tawi Sharia will start his lecture almost every time with this ayah why? to teach you that oh you believe fear Allah and keep yourself attached to the pious because that fear of Allah will stay with you as long as you are attached to the pious servants of Almighty Allah so keep this in our hearts keep this in our mind Allah bless us all keep us all firm on his deen Allah grant us the jazbah for knowledge Allah grant our children the enthusiasm for deen Allah Ta'ala keep us firm with Iman and let us leave this world with Iman. Those who are ill, Allah grant them Shifa Itam and Sayyidah Ajal, whoever asked us to make dua for them, making dua for all of them. Uh, those who have passed away in the Ahl Sunnah, Allah exalt them in Jannah and Ayyim. Those that are going to any problems in your homes, any calamity, may Allah remove you from this difficulty. We make special dua again for the Muslims of Palestine. May Allah have mercy upon them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them strength. And may Allah destroy those who are trying to harm them and trying to harm them all Muslim Ummah. Uh, at the same time, we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants long life and keeps the shade of Huzur Sayyidi Muhammad Sayyid Kabir, Huzur Ikaid and Millat and all the Mashaykh of the Ahl Sunnah upon our heads for a long, long time. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us always in the shade of the pious here and in the hereafter. Wa